G'day, g'day, guys. See, we've got two viewers already. Um, love to hear what you've got to ask, any questions or anything like that. Statues, movies, comics, um, whatever you want. I'm pretty much free. Got my beer here, ready to have a chat. Oh, everyone can hear me fine. This is my first time trying a live stream of my own. So usually you can see us on Darth Castle, um, on uh, uh, Tim Cask's channel as well, and a few others, uh, Batman Statue Collector and that. So, so there's three of you in there. Anyone got a question or anything like that they'd like to discuss? Feel free to hit me up with anything you want to know. Thank you very much, Ronald. You got any questions, buddy, you'd like me to answer or anything that we usually skip on? Nothing's off limits either, man. So you got questions about Australia, comics, cartoons, TV shows, movies, whatever. It's all good. Uh, yeah, um, who knows, man? Maybe after a few beers, extreme, the shirt might get ripped off. <laughs> um, yeah, Nightfall, uh, Nightfall Owl, you've heard my opinions on that, man. Um, like, seriously, I, I, I was I was a big fan of the bloke when I was younger. Um, you know, I was one of these guys that, you know, went to the comic book store and the owner of the shop pulls me aside and goes, oh, you like Stan Lee, do you, do you know the truth about him? And I'm like... What are you on about, man? You know, and he told me the whole backstory with Ditko and Kirby and stuff, and I was just like, dude, nah, no way. If that was the truth, that would be common knowledge. And as you get older, you just do a little bit of digging, and yeah, man, he he pretty much had the motto of uh, put your name at the top, every at the top, and you'll be the you'll be the dude that everyone remembers. And um, yeah, just basically milk that for all it was worth. Um, can't discount his his contributions to the Marvel Comics Company, though. Like, um, he pretty much was a master of self-promotion, but in saying that he also promoted pop culture, you know? So um, you can't say any of the other big companies and that had anything um, like that. I'm just trying to adjust the camera a bit. There we go. G'day, Bruna. Glad you're here, buddy. You got, if you've got any questions or anything like that, feel free to hit me up and ask. Just been doing a bunch of yard work and that today, so knocking all that out of the park. Uh, top three, com Ronald, uh, yeah, top three companies in order that I like my statues. Um, needless to say, I have to go prime one, number one. Like, yeah, they're more expensive than the rest and that, but the quality, like, you actually usually get better than prototype what they show you at the end. You know, um, they take on board a lot of people's suggestions and make the changes accordingly. Um, Sideshow were my favourite. Now they've dropped down to second, uh, pretty much just because um, their quality starts is starting to dip a little bit lately, which has got me concerned. I think it's because of the large volume numbers and the amount of different statues and that they're doing, um, and they seem to be going more along the route of uh, third party statues, like so DC Collectibles, um, PCS, um, basically anyone that was a statue manufacturer before them, they're, they're now bringing on board and selling their products. So I don't know if that's where they're, the direction they're going with their business. Um, and in saying that, like my favourite Prime 1 ones are the ones that they're doing in conjunction with Sideshow. Now, I'm not sure what sort of level Sideshow are putting into that. Uh, and the third, like, has to be DC Collectibles. I mean, um, their Bombshells range, uh, Cover Girls, um, and, you know, I'll even go fourth, like, Kota uh, That's just for me because I'm a comic book collector, you know, a comic book and movie collector, so they're the sort of ones I go for. But there's heaps out there, man, that do quality work, like Chronicle, um, uh, ECC, you know, like, so it really depends on what you collect, what you what you think would be your best. I'd actually be interested to know what you, you think your, your favourites are, Ronald, too. Well, look, um, I think XM is fantastic if you're one of these people that, um, you know, you live in one of the Asian countries where they have the the full lines and stuff available. Um, yeah, fantastic, great quality statues. Um you know, from what I hear, the customer service could be a little better. 
But, you know, they're branching out more into the worldwide scene for the first time. So you've got to cut them some slack on that. Um, but the downside is, like, being here in Australia, you know, you've got to go through third-party resellers, like their unofficial retailers. And um, with that, you know, you've got to really hope that you've got a good one because if anything stuffs up, then you're pretty much at the mercy of them whether they want to do the right thing or not. You know, we've seen a few issues of that lately. Uh, Bruno, yeah, the one-third pieces, look, that's, that's sort of like my my line at the moment and line in the sand, you know, where I'm sort of like saying I've got to set limits for myself and one third sort of like that at the moment. But I'm telling you what, man, they're really tempting me with that general Zod cyborg Superman and um, some of their other one third DC pieces they've got coming out, you know, particularly that Batman who laughs. Like if I was going to bite the bullet, any of them, it'll be that Batman who laughs. That thing is just absolutely insanely good. Uh, what I'm going to do too, um, I've, let you know i've got some tips in that for people too like uh people outside of america that want to watch them dc shows but you can't get access to the dc streaming service um so we know titans worldwide has been picked up by netflix people outside of the us but <clears throat> other shows like doom patrol and stuff like that um if you want to catch them weekly i recommend using a site called easy tv um there's many different ways around geo blocking and stuff like that with the website uh, make sure you pr you use a VPN so you don't get a knock at the door from the FBI or any other thing like that. Um, and, yeah, basically just download the torrents. I Personally, what I've got is I've got a little, um, like I have my computer hooked up to the home network and we've got, like, smart TVs all through the house. So what we do is um, we download an app on some of them um, called Plex. And then basically what happens with Plex is it basically turns all your media and movies, TV shows that you have on your computer into like a Netflix interface for your smart TV. So in that regard, you can basically just like use Netflix, but it's your own personal library and there's no actual downloading. It's just basically connecting on the Ethernet or Wi-Fi that you have in your house to just stream it through there. And I mean, like I've had it going on like uh, six different mediums at any given time. And yeah, mate, uh, they work really, really well. Um, no, no issues with uh, codecs or anything like that, or you know, um, issues. And I also get the movies from like our Wi-Fi movies, which is really good quality Blu-rays. I used to download them shitty screeners, but you find you download the same movie like fifteen times trying to get a better quality one. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm copying you, PJ, because I don't get to have my say on the show, so I get to have my say for now, and no one can stop me. Ha ha ha. You better be wearing your pants too. <laughs> and g'day, Edwin. Thanks for dropping in, buddy. Um, Adrian Vice, yeah, you picked up the Superman hush. Yeah, look, I really like the piece. Um, a bit controversial, this decision of mine. I'm not really a fan of Jim Lee's artwork only on Superman. I think he does Batman, the X-Men, and many other titles. Um, absolutely fantastic. But, yeah, just the way that he does his Superman, like he, like he does his face a bit too squinty and... Um, the muscles are way overdone on him, you know, like um, I always think of Superman as like a swimmer or a middleweight boxer, you know, so when they make him way too muscly, like uh, same with the, like the Miller Batman story arcs and stuff like that when you see the cartoons there, like Superman's just way too chunky, even though I'm, yeah, he's meant to be older and stuff and he is more powerful than that, but he doesn't build up like that. Like there's no way he can hit the gym and bench press, you know, 50 million kilos to pump up the weights. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, for me, like, that, that's why I think Henry Cavill's fantastic. I mean, like, the guy with his shirt off, the guy's a tank, you know, but um, in the suit, like, he doesn't look too well, too overdefined. Um, same as Christopher Reeve, you know. Christopher Reeve was fantastic in that regard, you know. Like, you looked at him and, yeah, he looked athletic, you know, like, you know, and, and when you look into the – like, I'm one of these guys that gets right into the science of shit and stuff like that as well. So – um, when I love looking at the science behind Superman, you know, I've watched them docos, you know, where physicists and stuff like that go through and break down how his powers would actually work and stuff like that, you know. So I really do enjoy that, and I'm glad that they are sort of copying that in the comics, you know. So there's no more of this where he'll grab a planet with two hands and shift it or go really, really fast and go back in time or any of that crap or my personal favourite, the magic kiss to make you forget. So... For all the people that have seen me shirtless, you've just forgotten. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, um, any questions? doesn't have to be statues. can be anything. If you've got questions about Australia, um, 
what we get up to on Darth Castle, whether PJ always really doesn't wear his pants, um, where he's performing in the uh, Chippendales this weekend. I've, I've got all the goss, so can fill you in all in on that. Whose mouth is spitting in now and all, all that sort of good stuff. <laughs> And Edwin, I hope it's uh, nice and sunny there for you, buddy, on that beautiful beach of yours. But yeah, look, um, uh, actually, I was going to say, Adrian, too, that that, that one, like that one third hush Batman, man, fantastic, and the um, and like that Poison Ivy, absolutely fantastic. You know, I I can really see people why they get the full set. And speaking of people who get the full sets, Batman statue collector, g'day, Chris, glad you could join us, mate. Uh, just me solo by myself today, copying PJ, you know, as he says. But um, no, I've been planning something like this for a while, just have a little chat, you know, so I can drop spoilers of comic books and stuff like that without getting yelled at. <laughs> uh, well, look, Bruno, in saying that, when you look at them high-end pieces like that, you generally find that there's a lot of people that they, they've pre-ordered ages ago. You know what I mean? And it's not until I actually get that shipping notice notification and here you must make final payment and they just go, oh, shit, you know, I don't have the cash I'm going to need to cancel, you know. So if you're on the wait list um, for something that big, generally you're in a good place and probably will get it converted. Ah, Master Race Batman, yeah. Um, actually, the Master Race of the Dark Knights, Adrian, was probably my least favourite of the three um, titles. My personal, I, I really like the second one. I mean, the first one was fantastic, but the second one, you know, where he kills Joker and everything um, was sort of like what did it for me. You know, I was like, finally, finally, you know, no more Joker, no more torment, no more, you know, because I always thought that about with Batman, you know, and that's why I'm more of a Superman fan, you know, the amount of times he's locked Joker up and he gets away and then, you know, every time there's a couple of hundred deaths and stuff like that, you know, like it's really on his hands, you know. G'day, Jeff. Glad you're here, buddy. Always good to see you in the chat. But, um, yeah, basically what we're doing for the people that have just joined now, just basically have a beer with Bondi and um, feel free to ask me any questions uh, of anything that, you know, hasn't been covered in our chats and that before. Um, if you just want my viewpoint on something, you know, this is a pretty much an open forum for that too. So, um, and, yet, yeah, as I said, not just statues. can be about Australia. can be about football. can be about whatever you want, you know. Um, like I've been reading the comics lately and, Anyone who hasn't been on that doomsday clock, I highly recommend it. Um, Jeff Johns has recently gone on the record saying this is the most important work that he's done in all of his writing. So that gives you a hint to how good it's going to be. And um, episode nine, like really, I'm not going to drop any spoilers and stuff, but really shows, like really pushes home why the new 52 was bound to fail. You know, um, and it's good that when they came into that, they already had that exit point planned to get out of the new 52 and into rebirth and bring it a bit back to what the DC comics used to be. Um, we've seen with Marvel, you know, trying to, um, you know, trying to, you know, cater to more to the movie sense and stuff like that. Um, and Jeff, no, I don't know Chris Hemsworth. I have met him. Um, I've met his two brothers as well. Um, the famous one and the non-famous one. Um, but, yeah, like, dude, really top bloke. Like, you know, he's got nothing but time for people. Jason Momoa I've met as well. Like, actually had a beer with Jason Momoa. That guy's, like, absolutely a legend. Um, Bruno, uh, my next piece is, well, I'm waiting for this um, this Wonder Woman uh, head that I got custom done for the Batman v Superman Wonder Woman. I'm still waiting on Sideshow's Wonder Woman um, premium format. And um, as soon as the Flash Prime 1 drops here in Australia, I'll be grabbing that from my local retailer as well. Um, more down the track, I've got Poison Ivy nearly paid off. Green Arrow's almost paid off. Um, and I've still got to pre-order um, uh, Green, Green um, Lantern, the um, John Stewart version. So, yeah, because I'm a big fan of the DC Unlimited and... You know, I really like the idea. Like, next to Hal Jordan, I have to say that John Stewart's pretty much my favourite. Like, um, then probably Guy Gardner and then, uh, you know. Yeah, Bruno, actually, it, it's, I've, I've, I have gone just DC. Um, that's why, as you can see, there's only a few remaining Marvel pieces left up there. Um, 
the reason being too, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll get to that, Chris. Um, yeah, basically, it was just coming to the uh, the point of space, you know, particularly uh, and price and stuff like that, and. It's you put it, uh, the other thing was too, you know, you want to get full lines of something on one of these OCD collectors, you know, that when I start on something, I want to get them all. So unless I really dislike the piece. And when I was doing the Avengers, you know, there's some of them, um, you know, some of them pieces that are just way too expensive for what they are, you know, like the thank the flippers for that. But um, and for you, Chris, yeah, that's not a knife. This is a knife. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we <laughs> this was a pretty famous line here. Baz, no, I haven't seen Captain Marvel yet. I'm waiting for the real Captain Marvel Shazam to come out. Um, I have no hate for the Mar um, Captain Marvel movie or anything like that. Um, just no real desire to rush off and see it. I don't think it's going to be my cup of tea, you know, sort of thing. So not really, not really. Um, um, Jeff, I was actually fortunate enough to see that Green Arrow in person. It has... They have dumbed it down a little bit from the one that I've seen in the new production picks and that, particularly in the face. Like, it looks a bit, just a little bit flatter. Um, but the overall design of the piece is absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, Guy Gardner with a chainsaw construct would be absolutely dope, yeah. But I think um, Green Arrow is going to be the next big DC one that comes out that will pretty much, as soon as it's released, will be gone. Um, particularly anyone who's got Black Canary, like... Pff, they look fantastic together, you know, and that's that's what I'm really looking forward to. I think um, I'll break up my display and actually remove um, Black Canary from the DC lineup and put the two of them together. And actually, in fact, I'll probably put them here with my Justice League line um, just to pay homage to the fact that Black Canary was the first female uh, chair member of the DC League. So, um, you know, a lot of people over overlook that fact, um, particularly after... Um, the the crisis event when they rebooted the Justice League, it was actually um, her. Well, she was the, the driving force behind forming the team because she, in that continuity, was the daughter of the Black Canary from JSA. So she wants to form a team of her own and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, basically, it was like her, um, Green Lantern, Flash, Aquaman, Martian Manhunter, um, and I'm missing someone. It'll come to me, but yeah. Um, and in that, yeah, basically, yeah, well, actually, Jeff, yeah, I was surprised at how quickly it went, the the wait list went up. Um, and actually, the there is no wait list for the collector's edition, apparently. It's the only wait list is there for the exclusive, which is weird. You know, usually you see that with the Prime One pieces. But, um, you know, CLA World Union, uh, good to see you, buddy. Um, we're basically doing any questions here and not that anyone in the panel, anyone wants to ask, um, feel free to shoot. I'm just having a beer here and having a little chat with you people, my friends, so I don't burn my fingers out. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, she was on Earth too. Um, that, yeah, before the before um, New 52 and that, and they did the new Earth 2 where all the main heroes and that got killed. But yeah, um, Arrow is going to look fantastic. That, uh, that's what I'm loving, Jeff, with that line. Um, both, and I think that's the good part about that sideshow is working in conjunction with Prime One with that, because as you can see here, I really think the Rebirth lineup work really well with the Prime Ones. You know, so I'm hoping that that continues. I've got the Wonder Woman Premium format coming in that I'm going to put there with them, and you know, all I'm really hoping for is that next year sometime they're going to be putting out. Um, a Martian Manhunter from Prime One, you know, if they do that, that'll be absolutely fantastic. Oh, that's who I was missing from that lineup, my name, Martian Manhunter. So yeah, um, and to me, like that was one of my favourite DC lineups of the Justice League, you know. And I still remember when Superman, they asked Superman to join, and he's, "Oh, my time is not my own." And Green Lantern got a bit pissed off actually about it, you know. He's, who's who's got time of their own, you know? Like I've got a whole space sector to look after, and. But, yeah, no, what he actually thought was he thought that him joining the team would undermine their teamwork and that, you know, like it'd be, be a bit too self-reliant on him. So, And he also said that, you know, the league can take care of things that he can't, you know. So that was that was a good concept. Um, now, like, it's the, the A-team back together again and Cyborg's been bumped up from his role in the Teen Titans, so he skipped the Teen Titans in the new continuity and become a founding member of the league, which is, I, I think, great. You know, I always was pretty partial to Cyborg in Titans. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to where the Titans TV show is going this year, you know. Like, now we've got 
um, Deathstroke confirmed. So hopefully we might get a um, bit of Janus contract for the, the comic book readers out there that know what I'm talking about. Um, those that don't, basically Dark Side, uh, not Dark Side, uh, Deathstroke gets his daughter to um, and gives us superpowers like Earth-based superpowers. Um, what do you think? Of, oh, the superpowers one from Tweeterhead, Baz? Absolutely fantastic. Only thing holding me back is that it's fifth scale, you know, um, and it's sort of like, you know, God, man, why can't they just do quarter, you know? like, And I understand, you know, Sideshow's got the license for quarter scale and stuff like that, but, I mean, like, they're working in conjunction. I, I can't see why they can't do a collaborative agreement the same way that, you know, they do it with Prime 1. I think that would be fantastic, so... And, yeah, we've got 10 viewers, man. Four thumbs up. Thank you very much, guys. Um, I know it's not, like, you know, too exciting just with me here, but, you know, a few more beers and maybe I'll rip the shirt off. <laughs> um, the Joker by... Uh, I can't pronounce his name, though. Um, probably not Bruna, um, only because, like, to me, the best one Jokers I've ever seen have been, like, the, the classic one, um, which I've got over there. I've got the um, uh, the Tim Burton one, Jack Nicholson, which, you know, growing up, like, the 89 movie was fantastic. And um, I've got the Heath Ledger Joker. So, you know, until we get another movie one or something, I think I'm pretty right because I've got, like, the comic and the both the movie sets done. So, I mean, what I'd probably get is um, I do have the Tweeter Head one-fifth one and um, of... Uh, Adam West Batman, so I might, you know, I'd get that one from the old Batman TV show probably. And, yeah, look, I can see why. I mean, like, that that death head skull that he's got that comes with him looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, and congrats, Bruno. Like, it's a good choice, man. You know, like, but as I said, it's, like with me, I'm trying to resist that urge of falling into that one-third prime, you know, because um, that's where it starts to get very, very pricey. <laughs> And I'm not prepared to go work the street corner like PJ to pay for my statues. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, basically it's a rainy day here. It's a Monday here in Australia and um, there's no work at, on site and that because of the pouring down rain. So did some housework and just decided, well, bugger it, have a chat with the people. <laughs> and um yeah well look i'll tell you what hey archangel buddy how are you mate it's basically a free-for-all question so the cla world union is that a mixture of both marvel and um dc mate Oh yeah! Wow, yeah, they they do look good, Jeff. I was, yeah, I saw that too. That um, that bat fleck looks fantastic. I'm, I was a bit bummed that he got taken away from the role, but I mean, it's all these problems outside of the acting and that that I think you know Warner Brothers are just sort of like trying to step back a bit away from. And I, plus, I think he cracked the shits when they said we Daddy didn't want him to write and direct the Batman movie. So I think he was a bit of a dummy spit. But oh well, what can you do? And now there's rumours too today that um the guy that plays Cyborg's out as well. So, I don't know, you know, don't know what's happening there. And, uh, yeah, PJ is a private dancer, dances for money. <laughs> oh, that sucks, Chris, about the uh, spring bake, you know. So, you know, I, I hear you, man. I'm be, I'll be starting a new job pretty much this week too, and once I do that, then... I won't have a lot of free time, so it's a big money roll, but it takes up a, will be taking up a lot more of my time. So, on the plus side, more statues, <laughs> more statues, and more reviews. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, Archangel. Basically, we're just, and you'll you'll love this, man. No no questions are off limits. Basically, ask whatever you want, and I'll try to answer it as truthfully as possible. Oh yeah, man. More money, more statues, bro. <laughs> have to get some more Batman, Chris. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, with with the DC TV show, so everyone's been aware of Titans and Doom Patrol, which I'll tell you what, Doom Patrol just gets weirder and weirder and funnier and funnier each week. I'm really loving it. 
Um, Brandon Frazier seem Brandon Frazier seems to have the one common line. What the fuck, you know? So uh, I think that's he's, he's doing it pretty good. Uh, like read it, read, read a far Elastigirl, um, and yeah, the Negative Man, you know, like uh, and great to see Cyborg in there. And I'm hoping that that leads into. They're saying that it's leading into next season. He's going to leave Doom Patrol and end up joining Titans. So they'll have the pretty much the entire original lineup of Titans there too. So that'll be fantastic. But um, one that a lot of people have missed actually, um, when I talk to people about, they've missed it is Krypton. Like guys, get on that. I mean, if you're a Superman fan, um, you actually really don't even have to be a Superman fan to enjoy it. It's it's more pretty much nothing to do with Superman. It's got more to do with his grandparents and his great grandfather. Um, and basically some villain from the future that I won't, you know, stuff up that comes back in time and tries to alter history to make things more beneficial for him and Krypton so Krypton won't be destroyed. So, yeah, basically has massive reper repercussions for the entire DC universe, that show, um, particularly. And it's made by sci-fi, which is the only thing that worries me because sci-fi have a history of having good shows and then just basically dropping them without, without a moment's notice. So... You know, they get popular and then the proprietors ask for a bit more cash for something for the license. And yeah, um, Adam Strange was, I mean, you, th there was other characters you could have used besides Adam Strange, I think. Yeah, like for, for the time traveling. Um, in actual fact, uh, what's his name? The Rip, Rip Hunter probably would have been a better choice. But yeah. Adam Strange was, I was a bit, oh, okay, you're traveling here with the Zeta Beam. First, I've heard of the Zeta Beam being able to, you know, travel back in time. But yeah, okay. Um, yeah, Krypton is an amazing show, Jeff, and you'll get hooked. I mean, look, in saying that, it is a slow burner. So you've got to push through the first like three episodes because they're going through a lot of history and, and backstory for people that have never read like the Superman comics and like the history of Krypton and stuff like that. So, but like, you know, some of the big villains you're going to see, like Doomsday, Brainiac, um, this season Lobo's coming in. So, yeah, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. And all I can say is I think Lobo's going to be sent as a bounty hunter to um, probably take out the main antagonist that's caused all this drama. All right, Chris, catch you later, buddy. You have a good, not good night's sleep. Yeah, Archangel, um, as, as you get on further, man, but particularly as you start getting on to where Brainiac comes down and stuff, like the Krypton actually makes his landing, it really kicks up a notch and it's just like balls to the wall action all the time. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, Bruno, my favourite hero is Superman, um, hands down. I uh, remember being a little kid and falling in love with the posters of Christopher Reeve and begging my mum, Superman, Superman, one of the first words I, I learnt. So she used to always take me, I think she said that she took me to see the Superman 2 movie like six or seven times at the cinemas when it was out because every time I saw the symbol I had to go. Um, and Adrian's uh, favourite character is Batman. That's why we're pretty much the odd couple. We, we get on the piss and start our arguments and, you know, he's, oh, you know, but if Batman had planning and stuff like that, and I'm like, yeah, man, but if he didn't, like Superman, just reach out and snap his neck. So, um, yeah, we always have that little argument. But, uh, yeah, like, and, and it's not for his power level. Like, you know, people go, oh, you know, people that don't like him, so they don't like him because, you know, he's pretty much, you know, OP and all this sort of stuff. Um, I actually look at him in a vastly different way. Um yeah, his body's Kryptonian, and but his mind's human. Like he's growing up with a human. He's got all the the chinks in his armor, like psychologically, that an, any human would have. And that's what I really like about the the sparring between um, uh, Lex Luthor and Superman for that reason, because Lex really knows how to push them buttons, you know. And he always tends to walk away with his hands clean, you know. It was never me, you know. It was some disgruntled employee of mine. A corporation that thought they were doing me a favor and when i find them that and then you know you see him hand the guy a check and off they go to some desert island to live their life in luxury for the rest of their life and or he's given some cure of a disease to them that their child's got or something like that you know so <clears throat> yeah he's one of them characters that i really like too lex that you know you wonder if he turned his intentions for good you know like how different would the DC world be, you know? And I like that they did that in uh, New 52 where he actually 
come to that re- revelation and tried to be a good guy for a while and wore that armoured suit with the Superman. Yeah, and that's the thing, Bruno. Like with DC, you're either a Superman or a Batman fan, and you know it's it's um, Man of Steel too. What I've heard, Adrian, is that they're not actually writing or doing a, a Man of Steel two one, but Henry Cavill being Superman is contracted for another seven movies with DC Warner Brothers. So they're actually talking about there'll be guest appearance roles. Like for starters, are already hinting that he may be one of the um, the guest characters near the end of Shazam. So I think what you're going to see is like Superman rocking up in a lot of these solo character films with the offer of joining the Justice League or maybe helping them out in something or whatever, you know, like that. that's pretty much what we'll see of him. They're going to be using him more as a bit character. Um, and, you know, you'll see stuff like, you know, in movies – on the TV or something in the background, you'll see a news story on Superman performing some feat or whatever like that. I think that's the route that they're going with that. But, yeah, as as yet, there's no confirmation from um, DC Warner Brothers about um, a Man of Steel movie being done. Well, I think, you see, where, where I think they stuffed up was with General Zod straight off the bat. You know, like you, you brought in a world breaker um one of his biggest villains and stuff like that and then they did doomsday like pretty poorly in the batman v superman one so all you've really got left for him that could be like a standalone villain would be like metallo um brainiac um something like that and if they did i think they'd do brainiac like where it's more of a justice league thing like and they'd do that after the dark side saga so thanks archangel thanks for my buddy Hey, Ed, dude, thanks for being up, being up, buddy. Um, we're just doing some questions, so you can shoot me whatever questions you want, mate, and I'll try to answer them as truthfully as possible. Just basically having a beer with Bondi is the name of the show, so we're just um, killing chicken back. Uh, there is talk that he will. Um, and, Jeff, I think it's going to be more along the lines of I don't think you're actually going to see him appear or anything like that. It'll be more along the lines that you'll see him maybe travelling through space after being banished and being sent you know, back to, like, on his way back to Earth after being sent, like, you know, what was it, 5,000 light years away from Earth. So he's been flying for 5,000 years to get back here. Um, my favourite piece in my collection, Ed, dude, at the moment, like, just for pure quality and wow factor, I'm going to have to go the uh, the Prime 1 Cyborg. I think that, like, that one blew me away more than anything. But um, it, it's really close with the Superman Doomsday diorama from um, Iron Studios. That That's... That's pretty much right up there. Uh, my favourite Superman story in the comics, Baz, there's a lot, mate. There's really a lot. I mean, like, I liked, um, I'm going to have to say probably Red Sun. Like, for originality, I really like the idea of Superman in Russia um, and then finding out at the end that basically he wasn't even Kryptonian, that he was actually, like, the what the great, 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 great grandson of Lex Luthor from the future. So, yeah, that was... Um, the one DC story that I'd recommend to a newbie Red Cup, uh, pick up Heroes in Crisis or Doomsday Clock. Um, they're the two that I would really most recommend at the moment. Like, they're just every issue, man, you pick up and it's just like, what the hell, man? You're like, you're just blowing away with the writing and stuff like that. Um, sadly, you know, uh, yeah, All Star Superman was good. Yeah, um, I, I didn't mind that one either, Baz. But like with them, two new books, um, the sad thing is that they're slowing down a bit because Jeff Johns has stepped away from DC Comics and he's now heading up the DC uh, Film TV division. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried where they're going with that. And they're actually getting um, Bendis to step in and fill the hole um, of Jeff Johns a fair bit. Now, Bendis has done great work at Marvel over the years and, fingers crossed, he's doing the same for DC. So far, the Superman... Um, standalone titles like Superman and um, Action Comics. Uh, he's been doing them. He's been doing the Superman one, and it's, it's it's absolutely fantastic. You know, like there's current story arc at the moment with Superboy um, coming back, growing up from a, you know, a six-month trip away with his granddad and he's come back as a teenager um, is, is really, really good. I'm really enjoying that too. Oh, no worries, Ed, dude. Um, yeah, actually, I'll tell you what, Ed, dude, with that The Walking Dead, bro, um, 
look, they sort of lost me again at the beginning of this season. I was a bit, oh, you know, and it was a bit like, here we go with the goat stuff and like that boring goat episode. And that, but they've turned it around in the last couple of episodes. You know, I've, I've, I've stuck with it and really glad that I have because I'm now actually pretty really liking this character beta. I think he's um pretty cool. Um, Vertigo. Uh, some of them I have, like, you know, for example, uh, V for Vendetta and stuff like that I have red cap, but um, a lot of their newer stuff I really haven't. I mean, the stuff outside of DC, I really wait until they bring out, like, a, you know, a must-read list of graphic novels and stuff like that. Um, Swamp Thing and Lucifer, no, no, I'm not really into the mystical ones. So I'll go, I don't read Justice League Dark either. I love Zatanna. Um, I like John Constantine and that, but they're not books that I'd read, you know, not saying if I saw them in a film or something like that, if they made a brief appearance, I wouldn't nerd out because I know who they are and I know their backstories and stuff like that. But um, I am looking forward to the Swamp Thing TV show. And with, um, and I've got to say with Constantine too, wasn't really a fan of the guy playing Constantine in the uh, CW until I met the guy. I actually spent some time chatting to him on the side and, Dude, what a cool bloke. Like, seriously, now, this is where I like the guy because he's actually a cool guy now, you know, so I look over, you know, the the, the stuff-ups in the continuity and stuff like that. Um, yeah, Jeff, also, too, with um, Black Adam. Yeah, look, they're going to have to set it up. You're going to see The Rock as Black Adam and that because they, that one they are working. I think the script's done. They're getting ready for pre-production and stuff. So they're going to do the Black Adam movie and it's apparently going to have um, Hawkman and Stargirl in it. So it's going to go back to ancient Egypt with Hawkman and then probably more so where you see Stargirl will be like in the modern age where it jumps forward you know, where he's actually in the modern age now um, where she'll try and get him into the JSA because there is talk of a JSA TV show coming out, which, thank God, and, or or possibly movie, which I'm I'm blaming Jeff Johns for. Now a lot of people are going, oh, that's crap, you know, like da-da-da-da-da, you know. Mate, if you're a fan of the comics, JSA is where it all started, you know, like all these characters that the modern-day characters are basically based off, Um yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, Baz, I did not know that, that Stargirl is based off Jen John's deceased sister. Okay. I mean, I was always a fan of Starman. You know, I always thought that that was, um, and I'm glad that, um, spoiler alert, he's been brought back um, into continuity. Um, turns out that he basically fell into some black hole or something in the 80s, and now he's back, the original one with the, the star costume and the glowing eyes and the, the power where it can absorb radiation from stars directly into him and using his energy blasts. So essentially the Captain Marvel ripoff. Um, uh, fave movie of DC. Man of Steel. Yeah, Man of Steel, pretty much because I'm a Superman fan and I like the modern... The only thing that I didn't like in it was when he allowed his dad to be killed by the tornado um, and I was just a, bit, just a bit, oh, come on, man. You know, like, you could have been there, grabbed him, moved him and no one would have seen you. You know what I mean? Like, so, yeah, um, no one had their phones out recording or anything like that. So, yeah, he could have got away with it. Um, JSA Jeff John's run was... Arguably, probably one of the greatest JSA runs that I've ever read. You know, and I, I've been reading them since I was like this big. You know, so um, yeah, like I, I really love Jeff Johns. You know, like I think he's a, a legend of his time. And you know, years down the track, he's going to be put right up there with Grant Morrison and some of the other greatest writers of time as well. And yeah, that scene was bad, Baz. You know, like um, but like the battle between him and Zod, um, the drive, like. They did Zod well to a point where, like the comics, you know, you can actually sympathise with the guy. You know, like, he's, hang on a minute, we're Kryptonians and I'm trying to recreate Krypton. You're a Kryptonian, you're not on board with this. You know, like, what the hell's wrong with you, you know? And, you know, you sort of watch that and you're like, yeah, man, you know, I can really see what he's on about, you know? So, um, yeah. And, and I like, that was one thing I did like in Batman v Superman, how they drew the continuity of that battle, like, scene for scene, you know, into... The beginning of Batman v Superman to show the groundwork of why Batman started to build up the hatred against him and stuff like that. Not only did it cost him a lot of money in um, building repairs and stuff like that, but, you know, the death of a lot of his employees and friends and stuff like that. 
Um, yeah, actually, I'm reading that Hawkman standalone at the moment, Red Cup, and that's uh, pretty good too, where he's actually trying to piece um, all of his origin stories and that back together and so he can remember everything. Um, yeah, I'm done, and that'll be knowing knowing the writers behind that it's going to be leading into something big, you know. So, I mean, I was a bit concerned if it was done before Dark Knight's Metal, if, if that's what they were going for, like the leading to that. Because um, I like Dark Knight's Metal, but I found the last couple of books in that series to be exceptionally boring and a bit hurt your brain when you try and read them. Um, I collect both, Bruno. I collect uh, comic books and statues. Um, truthfully, though, I don't go out and buy newish or hunt comics. Um, if they're old ones that, you know, people want, you know, 200, 300 bucks for a graded copy or whatever, that, I'll just download digitally, which you can get from um, getcomics.info. It's a free sh comic streaming service that you can basically get any of your old classics um, and the new weekly runs from DC, Marvel, Vertigo, Wildstorm, basically all the major public publishing houses, they usually do weekly pulls. The new Hawkman one-third statue red cup from um, Iron Studios, I think it is absolutely fantastic. Um, you'd have to be a real big, massive fan of the character to get the open wingspan one. But um, beyond that, I think, like with the closed wing, yeah, man, he, if you, you're collecting the DC one-third line, it'd be absolutely amazing, like, to fit with them. Like, it, well, it, I think he scales pretty well to the Prime 1 ones, you know, because they're all just under a metre tall as well, you know. So, yeah. And it's because of the Prime ones have their massive bases. Yeah. Yeah, me too, Baz. That'd be awesome. Um, there was one done, a fan art piece. I'm just trying to remember who did it. It was... Um, oh, it's a guy here in Australia, Peter Kachabi. Um, I think it's Extreme Sculptures or something like that. It, they did one and it was absolutely amazing. He also did a Shazam transformation statue, which was just like, man, off the chain, insane. It was like, um, you know, the... Iron Studios one tenth transformation one that's like about this big. Well, he did it, but like quarter scale, and this thing was massive, you know. And um, and he actually had like Shazam in his colours rather than like you know a black dream sequence sort of thing. And yeah, that that looked absolutely amazing, like off the chain good. Yeah, look, Iron Studios do a bit of hit and miss. You know, sometimes they release something that'll just absolutely blow your mind, or other times you'll get some of their stuff and go oh, did the same person do this? Because it looks completely different than the last one I got, you know? So I'm not sure what goes on there. I mean, um, even on their website, they don't really go into too much about who sculpts what and stuff like that. They just say inspired by which artist, you know? Uh, yeah, that Hawkman is massive, Bruno. Like, um, just to put it into context here, just from the measurements that I've seen, so if he was here, basically he'd take up this entire section here with the open wings and he'd be about that tall. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty massive. And that's what it is. I mean, like when, you, when you're a collector, you've got to – you got to set rules for yourself because, you know, if I started going outside, look, I, I, I started off collecting one-tenth and one-sixth, so, and I'm getting rid of them all now because I've decided not, well, I've got a, a majority quarter scale and I'm going to stick with the quarter scale. Um, in saying that the only one-sixth in that, I'll get are like the combat dioramas and stuff like that that they produce. Uh, the new Batman line from Sideshow. Uh, are you talking about the um, Tim Burton... Uh, sorry, the um, Bruce Tim animated ones. Because if you are, I, th I think they're absolutely fantastic um, that they're finally doing the Batman animated series statues. Um, they are, like, technically they're one-fifth, but I think they would pretty much pair up pretty well. Um, the new Sideshow premium format Batman I really wasn't a fan of. Um pretty much because I read the comics and they're trying to say it's the Rebirth Batman and I'm like, he doesn't look like the Rebirth Batman to me. I mean, Batman's outfit doesn't change too much since the late 2000s to today, but there is one thing where, oh, just the new PFs. Um, I haven't seen any that really draw me in too much yet. I mean, the, the Catwoman in that line was great, but, I mean, if you've got... The earlier Catwoman, you know, where she's got the, the 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 cat and the gem bag and stuff like that. Well, 
I don't see why you'd go out and spend extra money on the same one. I mean, you'd have to be right into the character. Yeah, um, Jeff, I've actually seen that. Um, they were the one that did the um, the Falcon, didn't they? Because uh, that one, I've got a, a mate that lives up the road that I went and had a look and he actually had it on display and it was absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, with, um, with some of the new ones that they're bringing out, I mean, look, I, I, I was really happy that, particularly when I started collecting like the DC females line, um, you know, like Cheetah, um, Batwoman, Huntress, Batgirl, uh, Black Canary and Zatanna. Like they, they were the newer generation of the girls that they were bringing out and I, there wasn't one that I wasn't, uh, like, you know, absolutely stunned with when I pulled out of the box. And, yeah, and, and look, Red Cup, it's, that's probably my biggest thing at the moment. That's why I'm really being drawn more to Prime 1 because they're starting to do that. They're starting to, you know, like, you know, who would have thought you were going to get a General Zod statue? That was like just a shock and a surprise for every Superman fan, you know? Um, the Brainiac that they've got coming out from the Injustice line, like that's a masked man. I've got to get that one. Um, yeah, Sly, Sly Art, we aren't going to get them. Um, I've talked to Toby, uh, the owner of Pop Culture, and he's basically said, look, the only exclusive they got was sent as a mistake. They were trying to wangle it because they've got the they sell the exclusive art prints there, and um, so they were sort of like saying, "Well, can't we get like a like maybe if we can even do pre orders, you know, to get the exclusives here?" And they went, "Nah." They just blank blanket said no, and um, yeah. So basically, that's pretty much dead in the water. Um, probably. And, and even with the prime ones, I mean, some of the exclusives. Um, I'm, 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 you know, like when I saw the exclusive for Green Lantern and um, also, I mean, the one for Cyborg wasn't bad because it had the extra arm cannon where it was flanged out like a sonic cannon rather than the, the blaster cannon. Um, so that one, yeah, I, I would have preferred to have got. But with that one, I'm, I'm happy with the um, the regular. And I mean, Green Lantern was just like a, an extra head sculpt, you know. So, you know, you've got to weigh it up, particularly here in Australia. Is it worth $450 shipping and taxes, you know? And, and, and that's what it is, you know, when you get into these things and you look and you go, oh, you know, shit, I could buy a secondhand statue on the seconds market, you know, or something for that sort of money. And, um, you know, that's that's where you weigh it up, you know. Like, oh, up until this year when that, that tax came in, I was always getting mine through Sideshow and just using the Sideshow rewards points to sort of like justify, oh, well, you know, at least that's paying for the shipping, you know. Um, but now I, I just can't do it, you know, like particularly now that the shipping costs have gone up and stuff like that, and particularly getting Prime 1s, like, Jesus, you know, they, these things weigh a ton. And that's what I've noticed with the Prime 1s over the Sideshows. Like the Sideshows tend to be more of a hollower sculpt where these prime ones are just like rock. You know, I'd hate to get one where they say, oh, yeah, just destroy it so you can get a replacement because, man, I think I need to get a jack jackhammer out for that or drop it from a, the side of a large building, <laughs> you know, something like that on the, on the concrete. Oh, man, Baz, I'm jealous as with that, man. You know, I had a big crush on Ursa when I was a kid. <laughs> and that's why I was a bit bummed when... Um, when it wasn't uh, Ursa in the Batman v Superman, it was uh, Fayora. And I was like, oh, man, bloody hell, you know, why aren't we going to get to see an Ursa? I wanted to see Ursa and Non. Yeah, I bet you would have been. Um, Bruna, I did have a few XM pieces. I actually had um, the Phoenix. I had the Captain Marvel one that they did. Uh, Thanos and the um, and the uh, which was a, oh, Captain America 75th anniversary one, but I have sold them all. Um, look, there's some things I was made aware of in XM's history and that that I'm not a fan of. Um, and some of the things I've heard coming out recently also, you know, just haven't been too crash hot on them. I mean, they do amazing work, and that, and as I said, like if you live in one of them Asian countries and that where you can actually buy direct from them. Um, you get that buyer protection and stuff like that, fantastic, you know. But if you've got to go through a reseller, you know, 
I, I, I'm not a real big fan of resellers because, you know, you see them all the time, man. You know, they pop up and they're the best bloke that anyone's ever heard of until they run away with $40,000 deposit of people's money um, or, you know, basically shaft you on replacement pieces and stuff like that because they can't get them. You know what I mean? Because, it, you know, they may have had the piece for like 30 days or something before they've sent it to you. By the time you open it and find the broken piece or whatever, they say, well, it's outside the window of our responsibility. Like, we don't know how many hands it's gone through or what's happened, which that isn't their fault. You know, like any any company would do that. It's the same. Like, if I went to pop culture and bought a sideshow piece and, I, and it's damaged, I'm not going to be ringing up sideshow and going, oh, I want a replacement. I'll be ringing pop culture because that's who I got it through and they'll have to chase up through sideshow, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, unless someone's an official retailer, you, you, you've got to take that risk. It's the same as getting fan arts, you know. Um, Sly, there is a Fayora statue. Hold on one sec. So yeah, uh, Gentle Giant made one for um, uh, DC collectibles. So it's uh, just a six scale one, but yeah, like a quarter scale one or something would be fantastic. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah, they did. Her, um, Jarrell, and a few others, I think, out of the out of the set. Like you, could, you could actually get Man of Steel out of that set too. Yeah, um, Sly, dude. Yeah, it comes in two boxes too. That's why. So you would have been looking at maybe three fifty for each box, and yeah. Whereas you know, you get it from Pop Culture, and yeah, you won't get the exclusive, but. You know, you get free shipping, and when you think it's seven hundred dollars, that's a lot of free shipping. <laughs> ah, the plot leak for Endgame. Um, let me break it down for you, Baz. I, I don't even need to know the plot. They're all going to band together. They're going to go out into space. They're going to hunt down Thanos, find him as a simple farmer, and that he doesn't have the glove or anything. And then they need to go out and get all the gemstones and the glove and undo what he did. That's pretty much the story, you know. Like, but hey, will it be great? Of course, it'll be great, man. You know, any movie that you have the entire team and stuff like that, you know, excellent. Yeah, Bruno, I'm I'm, I'm not a fan of XM either, uh, just because of that reason. I mean, like, if you can't get a worldwide license and let people order from you direct and stuff like that, then yeah, sorry, I'm 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 not on board. You know, it's the same reason I stay away from fan arts. You know, like some of them blow my mind. You know, and I've only been tempted a couple of times. Um, but yeah, you know, like I just can't get, just can't put myself in that. The X, even the XMs that I have bought, like I've bought from local collectors that actually had them in hand and you know that there was nothing wrong with and stuff like that. And that's why I picked them up. Um, yeah, the Superman statue by Iron Studios. Um, I, I do like it. Um, I think they could have done the uniform a little bit better. I like the black suit version a lot better, um, but I would have liked to have seen a short haired sculpt as well with that version, with the with the black suit version, um, purely because you know, in the more modern sense, you now you throw them back to the nineties, there, man. And, um, yeah, people like me remember you remember mullet Superman, but you know, a lot of the new collectors now, you know, if you showed them a mullet Superman, they go, huh. It's like when you mention to them about Superman red or blue and they just go, what? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, he evolved into an energy creature and there were two of him. One was blue, one was red, and they're just like. <laughs> but, yeah, um, look, I actually like the head sculpts on that original version. That There's only the one where he's, like, looking up. He, he looks like um, the villain from, um, oh, what's it bloody called, uh, Ready Player One. You know, the guy, that, when he actually goes into the game and he's got that, I think it was meant to loosely be a Superman sculpt or whatever, you know, with his avatar. But, yeah, like, it, it just looks wrong, you know. Um, like, his neck looks a bit like that, you know. So, but, yeah, other than that, you know, it, it looks like a fantastic statue and they could have maybe done without the lines and that on the armour. Oh, congratulations, Jeff. That's nice to hear, man, that someone I know won something. <laughs> And it looks good, but and and you know uh, th that's the other thing too. So they're bringing out this one six line, which is getting a worldwide license and shipping. Them. But dude, you can't charge premium format prices for a six scale unless it's a diorama. You know what I mean? Like if all these pieces matched up and stuff. Now people go, oh, the price point for that, um, 
you know, price point for that. Uh, Batman Sanity and the new Superman one that they're doing as well, where, where they're in the crystals and that. Um, I can understand that price. There's a lot of work. There's like you're basically getting like 10 statues for the price of one. You know what I mean? So I can understand in that regard. And the same with the Superman piece that they're planning on bringing out as well. But other than that, man, you know, charging 600 Australian dollars for a six scale piece that's going to be this big, nah, you, you just can't justify it. You know, like, like that, that's that's custom prices where you, you say to someone, this is exactly what I want, send them the images and they make it and then say, can we do 40 of them and then I can do it for you for this price, you know. So it, it really is. It is, Jeff. Um, and it doesn't really, like bar a few pieces, they don't retain value. Like if you ever need to sell them in a hurry, like, um, there was some fan arts done, Baz, um, of Superman Red Blue. You know, the, the issue where they first did the Superman Red Blue and you actually see them on either side on, on, on the same rooftop but they can't see each other because there's like a, a chimney stack between them, so taking off that way. And um, I also believe that I think it was Sam Gilchrist, um, is it Sammy G, got one done as well where he had the two of them flying around the world and, like, you know, at each other like that, like a little diorama. But, yeah, as as official, no, I don't recall any Superman Blue or Superman Red statues. It didn't last that long in the comics. I mean, what, it only ran for about, I think, three to four months. Well, look, in saying that, Jeff, um, their early stuff, yeah, yeah, their early stuff was a bit meh. You know, like like the overall sculpt of the statue and the paint app and everything was fantastic. But, yeah, their face apps were a bit, you know, not, not too crash hot. Like I, I used to joke with the first ones that I got and stuff that they give you three heads because one of them's guaranteed to be shit, the other one's going to be okay, and one will be, oh, wow, this is the one that I'll use. So, you know, um, the first one that I really saw of theirs, it was just like mind-blowingly good was that um, Venom, that Venom that they did. That was really, really good. But, I mean, now it's been dethroned by the, what, six or seven Venoms that have come out after that. So, <laughs> yeah, he was. He was, um, Baz, yeah, particularly um, uh, Tower of Babel and um, uh, what was the other one? The, the one with um, um, Prometheus. Yeah, that was a um, – Bruno, yeah, I'm really looking at getting that. Um, I'm actually going to wait for it to go on sale because there is um, – some pieces, some some things on it that I'm not too crash hot on, um, and I know a few other collectors in that are. So I don't think it's going to sell out as quickly as they make out that it's going to. Um, as you can see, like it's nearly up for release, and there's no wait list or anything on it. You know, like the edition size is massive. Um, you're going to be able to find it in retailers like Big Bad Toy Store or your local shops and that for years to come, you know what I mean? And then there's always going to be them people that buy it and then, oh, shit, I forgot to pay the mortgage repayments or the car payments and now I need to sell it for $200 cheaper and, yeah. So that's where I am. I'm, I'm that vulture that watches the BST pages and goes, oh, there we go. Someone needs to pay a bill? Bang. And, you know, they put it up for a good price. I'm not one of these guys who goes, oh, they're desperate. They got it for 600 Will you take four? You know, like people were rude like that, you know, like just dead set bloody rude. Yeah, Ronald, they're, they're not, man, because, I mean, you've got so many major players now. Um, they're not going to sell out like they used to because, you know, like you look at the the old Galactus market and what was that? There was 700 made of that thing, you know what I mean? And people still hunt for that to this day. You know, when you're making... 2,500, and then we're going to go down the path of, like, the Wonder Woman premium format, the old one that I've got here. So they've re-released that. They've, they did, what, 5,000, and now they're doing a second edition of another 5,000, and it sat there for a year and a half not selling before. I don't know why they're doing it again. But, you know, that's what it is. Um, no, no, I'm not getting the new Mr. Freeze PF. Um whenever they slap Marquette on something and try to justify an extra $350 price on it, I sort of balk at it. You know, I sort of like go, come on, man. You know, like you hold it up to another premium format that you got and you just go, nah. Like, you know, I, I always use Sideshow's Lobo as an example. That's larger than your average premium format. Um, Lex Luthor too. Like Lex Luthor's massive, you know. 
but they didn't slap Marquette on that and slap an extra 300 on it because of the size and the weight and stuff like that. They slapped an extra 50, you know what I mean? Which, hey, you got no problem with that. But when they start slapping a couple of hundred more, same with Swamp Thing, you know, I, I'm glad that people got it and loved it, you know, but for me, I, I couldn't justify spending that amount of money. Like they're trying to charge me one third scale pricing for a quarter scale. And that's where I saw like, you mm, draw the line. So, yeah. The new Lobo that they showed, Jeff, is absolutely disgusting. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of it at all. Like when you hold it up against the old one, man, all it's going to do is just increase the value of the old one. You know, usually it's the other way around, you know, when they release a new one and say, oh, look now, watch the, watch the, watch the price plummet of that one. No. Nah. The only one, only people that are selling their, their Lobos now are the ones that are going to get the Prime 1 one and they're going to go third scale because that thing is absolutely insane. You know, like... And, and insanely priced, I might add, particularly if you want the dolphins with it. Um, but look, you know, it, it, that thing is massive. Um, the artwork in, involved and the sculpt on it is just next level. And see, I usually joke and say that, you know, Prime One's quality just keeps going up. I, I know some people have had some issues recently with the um, with the uh, ears and that broken on the on the flash coming out, and um, someone showed that head sculpt that looked like it hadn't been finished painted um so there has been that but overall i think it's like they've got they've got ninjas and samurais standing there in these chinese factories saying you do bad job i cut off your hands you know and sideshow just like yeah if you say it's good man we'll take your word for it ship it out to the customer so yeah and yeah bruna lobo guitar hero like it's basically three guitar hero guitars slapped together with a a nuclear canister attached on it, and that's meant to be threatening. Like, you're not going to hit a target with that crap. You know, it's just going to spray shit everywhere. So, yeah, I, I, I didn't see how that was good at all. But then, look, you now I haven't read um, any of the modern comics with Lobo in it, so I, I can't even say if that's the art style they're going for in Lobo in the comics net now. Oh, Ronald, look, man, I can give you a quick rundown. It's, re it's really simple. I mean, this is why you'll find a lot of people that are hardcore DC fans really love the character, okay? So DC didn't really have any what they would call anti-heroes, right? <clears throat> and he came out like sort of after the success of Deadpool. Um, and so basically what he is is he comes from a race called Zarnians, uh, C-Z-A-R-I-A-N-S, and then basically their, their entire race that can regenerate from a drop of blood, like they're immortal and and they're, they're all a pack of arseholes and stuff like that. So he basically killed every living being on his planet. Like, And when you can think they can regenerate from a drop of blood, he actually set off like a biological weapon that contaminated their blood and killed them all. Uh, so he could be the last, you know, because he was seeing what Superman was doing with, I'm um, the last Kryptonian. He's like, well, I'll be the last Cezanian, you know. Um, and then basically used his abilities and strength and stuff like that to become like the world's, uh, the universe's biggest um, bounty hunter. So you pay him enough cash and he'll hunt anyone. And usually he's successful. That's why he's one of the highest paid bounty hunters in the galaxy. Um, doesn't care whether it's right or wrong as long as he's getting paid. The only thing he cares about, yeah, and as Baz said, and he's, and he's in love with a pack of space dolphins. So this is a guy that cares about nothing, right? And he's flying past this planet um, that was inhabited by these space dolphins that can actually fly through space and they're telepathic and stuff like that. And they reached out to him because they can actually transmit emotions and they bombarded him with their fear and their emotions of what was because they were being hunted by this alien race. Well, he's come down and basically within half an hour destroyed their entire fleet, you know, and they're all like love bombing him you know, with emotions. So he's feeling love and affection and that for the first time ever in his history. And he and he holds on to that. You know, but he only feels it with them. Everyone else can go get stuffed, you know? You know, so yeah, basically that's what it is with the, with the space dolphin, that why they come with space dolphins. It was like a, a character development story arc in his books. Tony, I've heard a lot of people talking about it. Um, I'm actually going to have to check, check it out, that Love, Death and Robots. Um, I really love the Umbrella Academy, so, yeah, I'll definitely give it a go. I am getting the Brainiac Prime 1, Bruna. I'm going to get the uh, the Injustice 2 one that comes out. Um, I'm loving the fact that you can actually still remove a few of the tendrils at the back so you can reduce his height by about that much, so he may actually fit in my shelves. <laughs> Otherwise, he's sort of like one-third scale. 
and I'll be probably getting the um, the Superman one as well, which I really like because I like the armor set and stuff like that just because I was really big into the game, you know. So, you know, I leveled my character up to level 40 and got all the gold gear and the purple gear and all the different sets and stuff like that. Even saved up the um, source crystal points to turn him into um, Bizarro and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, big fan of the game. <laughs> and yes, whenever it came to the end, I always picked Superman, stuff Batman. <laughs> yeah, the Brainiac, like, is next level, man, particularly with that lighter base and everything, man. You know, you're like, oh, look, I was blown away by the Sideshow one. The base on the sideshow rebirth Superman, and then I saw that come out, and I'm like, "Oh man, what the hell?" You know, someone's someone's doing his skull ship bloody right for once, you know. So yeah, it's it's, it's absolutely amazing, and um, the good part is like in the game, like in Injustice Two, like in the game, he basically looks the same as he does in the comics, like in the modern comics. So yeah, I'm loving it. You know, I wouldn't mind a vintage. Um, Brainiac 2 to go with my old Superman PF. Uh, Ronald, I used to. I've, I've still, look, at the moment, I've still got um, Thor, Iron Man, She Hulk, Red Hulk, Grey Hulk, and um, uh, Red Skull. And I've also got. Uh, where did I put it? My last Bowen, which is a Invisible Woman clear variant Bowen. So, yes, there is actually a statue there. You just can't see it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I did collect um, Marvel and that as well. Um, I, and, I, and I read both. Like, don't believe the hype from the boys on Darth Castle. I don't hate on Marvel. I actually read both. Uh, it's just that, in all honesty, I haven't seen a good Marvel book for about 10 years. You know, um, I, I try and pick them up every now and again and start to read them. I just go, what is this crap, and throw it away. And it's purely the writing. It's not the characters or anything like that. It's just the writing, um, the art style, some of the artists that they have working for them. I just look and go, what the, you know. And um, Dark Side on Throne. I haven't seen the Dark Side on the Throne yet. Is that a fan art piece? Oh, Iron Studios. Um, I don't know, man. I, I I don't really ever see Dark Side as one of them calm dudes sitting, you know, um, on, like particularly on a throne. I mean, I've only seen it a couple of times in the comics and stuff like that. So, I mean, I know throne pieces are all the rage, you know, because you've got Thanos on throne, Doom on throne, and all this sort of stuff. But I, I just don't see the point. Like, you know, if they're a character that doesn't really sit in the throne, I don't see it. You know, um, like even that Batman one, you know, Batman on throne, and he's got all like the Justice League, that fan art piece with all the Justice League weaponry and stuff and that draped all around him. Oh, A Tim will, will tell you that I hate Marvel with a passion and that he doesn't hate DC, but just look at the words, bro. He absolutely hates DC. If it's not X Men, it's shit. Um, but look, with me, I, I like it all. You know, like I still reckon that Jim Lee run of X Men in the 90s was fantastic. Um, the first Civil War. Um, was absolutely fantastic. Um, Secret War is still up there in my top 10 um, graphic novels of all time. You know, like I, I thought for a concept a story that was absolutely amazing. And then when you find out that it was, and when you find out the reasoning why they choose Spider Woman and stuff like that, like that was just brilliantly well written and thought out, you know, from beginning to end, you know, and that, that's what it is. You know, like I like the art. I like picking up a comic and wowing at the pictures and stuff like that. But for me, it's a story. You know, that's why um, I, I appreciate the writers more than the artists, you know. So, and, well, I shouldn't say I appreciate the artists as well, but I appreciate the work that goes into the writing, you know what I mean? Because the, the artists draw what the writers tell them. You know, this is what I want happening in this panel or this panel or this panel. And the, this is what you mean. That's what I mean. But you need to change this, this, this. Yep, 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 sweet as. So writers have got a lot more concept. And, yeah, and, and in DC is way better, Jow, um, in all – like in all the comic aspects, in the writing, in the artists, you know, like anyone of merit at at, um, at Marvel ends up crossing the floor and working at DC. You know, if, if it was so great, you'd be seeing the talent drain go on the other way, which you're not. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brew Baker's Iron Fist and Cap were good, but um, you know, as soon as like I, I, I Captain America is my boy in the Marvel universe. Like I, I, I remember once when I was a kid, I picked up a trash can lid and threw it. At another one, Captain America throws his mighty shield and smashed his teeth in, and I got in big trouble. Um, you know, with the old metal lids that they used to have in the garbage cans, and you know, so look, I, I was probably one of the first comics beyond Superman that I actually picked up and read. You know. Um, from the 80s, 80s onwards. And I loved it. You know, I, I, I love um, Crossbones, Red Skull, you know, like the, his League of Villains is absolutely... Baron Zemo, you know. Um, Grant Morrison, absolutely adore the bloke, mate. You know, like um, Tower of Babel, um, you know, the the run on the Justice League in the 90s, and that was fantastic. Um, his work on Flash, I don't think deserves the praise that it gets because it was a bit hit and miss. You know, some aspects were absolutely fantastic and others were a bit, and you know, that seems like a bit of a cop out. Like, and I think it was because he was working on so many different titles at the same time, you know. So you, you do get, um, you do get writer burnout, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, look, I, I love Spider Man back in the day, Bruno, but now it's this Spider Verse and there's, you know, 50 million bloody Spider Man and women and, you know, this reality, that reality and stuff like that. Like I tried to watch that into the Spider-Verse and I, I don't know if I downloaded a crap copy or not, but um, when I tried to watch it, it was like it was 3D when it wasn't. You know, like I, was, I, I downloaded the non-3D version and all it did was hurt my eyes. I was actually getting a headache watching it. I got about 10 minutes in and just had to turn it off. So I'm going to see a new version of it's just come out now, so I'll download that and check it out. But, um, yeah, Mark Wade on Flash, man. Oh, Baz, you know. I love you before, man, but I'm loving you even more now, man. Yeah, the uh, the Wally West saga. I loved how he did Wally West and the and the Passover from um, Barry Allen to Wally West as the Flash, and and where Wally actually evolved into his own style, the Flash. You know, um, sort of like a bit of a spoiler for those who haven't read it. Fla uh, Wally West became Kid Flash again in the comics, and then with uh, Flashpoint New Fifty Two, he was. Just not there. Um, uh, he had come back in Rebirth as part of this, and he was the one that sort of like gave them the hint that it was Dr. Manhattan from The Watchmen that did this to the DC Universe. And, yeah, and, and the return of Barry Allen. Like, you know, geez, that was that was done really well. The only thing I don't get about that, Baz, is why he um, wore that different suit and pretended to be a different hero for a while. Like, it didn't make sense. Like, come on, man, you're Barry Allen. Like, everyone would have just dropped to their knees and... You know, um, all right, Ronald. With that, I'd love for it to be Mouse and Manhunter. The Flash they probably won't do because they did the the Prime One Flash in collaboration with them. So with the movie coming, if it's a big success, like I'm 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 planning, it will be. Um, I I dare say that it's going to be a Shazam piece, probably either a movie-based piece or, which I hope not because they've just got to stop doing movie pieces because they can't do the head sculpts of crap. Um, I'm hoping it's a comic book piece, you know, of Jeff John's comic. Um, you know, and maybe have the, and with an X, I'd say have the X as hood up, head sculpt, you know, like with the hood up or even have it so that the hood can be go, go up and, and that in a different head sculpt. Um, maybe an angry face, but the the regular would have to be him with a big cheesy grin and stuff like that. Yeah, with Donald Bell though, I, Daniel Bell, I, I don't see him doing any um, DC pieces. He seems to be predominantly Marvel. Like, and hey, that's what he's comfortable in doing. Um, I don't see him being drawn to many to DC at all, you know, and and that's what I find, you know, some artists are fantastic, like, you know, Art Germ Lau, you know, like Art Germ Lau, his DC work stands way above his Marvel work, you know what I mean? But, you know, he he tends to like to do more DC pieces. Maybe, maybe because they've got the more creative license, you know, where DC sort of like once they give it to you, you know, it has to be really, really bad. Like, you know, you'd have to do probably Power Girl with, tits out or something like that for them to go, you're not doing that. You know what I mean? Um, other than that, DC are pretty cool. If you've paid for the license and you're doing it, pretty much do what you want, you know. Um, we're seeing that with Prime 1, you know. Prime 1 are just hitting them up. Oh, so I see Sideshow's got your DC license. Um, but what about Hush? 
You know, what about this story arc or this story? And they're like, oh, well, yeah, we hadn't thought about selling an individual license for that. And, dude, the one they've got me, if they do this in quarter scale, I'm probably going to end up on a street corner, which will be the Kingdom Come line. If, they, if, if Prime One do finalise that deal and get the Kingdom Come line, man, I'm gone. That, that, that And if they're doing it in one-third, I will probably also just be bang straight into the one-thirds in, in that set because that was... Arguably, probably my, one of my favourite story arcs of all time in the DC universe. I, I really love it. You know, where they turned the Book of Revelations into a comic book set in the DC universe was like, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The Alex Ross older suit man, you know. And, I mean, I, I remember one line where Lex Luthor mentioned about a kryptonite bomb and he said, oh, well, there's no point using that anymore. He's absorbed that much of it and he's become pretty much immune to it over the years. He goes, all we'll do is make him break a sweat, you know, and you're like, oh, shit, you know. So, you know, 50, 60-year-old Superman becomes that powerful and you're like, wow, that's scary. Um, you like, sort of like think maybe it is for the best that he's hung up the cape and retired. But, yeah, like that was um, amazing. Oh, oh, James, Che, geez, a thousand times better. And, I mean, New 52 had some great things going for it, like uh, what they did with Aquaman, um, the bringing in of Cyborg into the league um, and stuff like that were, were absolutely fantastic. Some of the story arcs, and that, but I just could not get over how arrogant and pig-headed the um, New 52 Superman was. That's why I was probably – I look, I remember back in the 90s when they did the Death of Superman comic book, and I swear I actually cried. You know, when I got to that last panel where Lois is holding him, and you're thinking, oh, he's going to be all right. It, they're just selling it as the death, but, you know, next week he'll be back, you know. And, nah, when he was gone, gone, and you're like, no, nah, man, like that, that was a tear in the eye. Um, but when the New 52 Superman one died, jumped up, yes, he's gone, he's gone. Um, and, like, in saying that, though, the um, the story arc where he was depowered, you know, in the jeans and the white T-shirt, the Superman symbol, when he was going across America, that was done well. But beyond that, like, he was just... And, I mean, they, they, they sold it because, you know, his parent, in that continuity, his parents died uh, and be, uh, dropping him off at his prom, you know, on the way home from his prom. So I can understand why he didn't have that moral compass that my Superman, the one that's in Rebirth now, had with his parents, you know, where they were always there. You know, whenever things got too tough, he could just fly home to Kansas and unload on his mum and dad and they'd be like, well, you need to look at it this way, Clark, you know, and stuff like that. So... Uh, I can understand why he was the way he was, but yeah, I, I, I wasn't a big fan of it, you know. Um, in, but in saying, I mean, like I was a big fan of that um, that real world Superman that they did, um, where um, if you haven't read that, that, that's an absolute cracker book. It's set in the real world, and this kid's named Clark Kent. You know, his parents thought it was a bit of a, a joke to name him Clark because their surname was Kent, and he copped shit all his life, you know. Um, and he's a bit of a loner and stuff like that. And one night out camping. He wakes up and he's floating in the sky and he realizes he's got like the Superman powers, you know. So he makes himself a Superman costume and stuff like that. And man, that was really, really good. You know, it was more like a real world setting, like if there really was a Superman and how the world would react. And yeah, you know, and, and like in that world, Superman did exist in the comics. That's where he drew his inspiration from. Um, but yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I, I can say that a bit. Yeah, yeah, Baz. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd like to see that. I would like to see that because I thought that was a very important development in the Lex Luthor story arc, um, particularly when, you know, I, I, I think there was nothing better than that scene when he knocks on Bruce Wayne's manor and Alfred answers the door and he goes, oh, can I, can I see Bruce Wayne? And he goes, oh, he's unavailable at the moment. He goes, well, maybe I should rephrase, can I see Batman? <laughs> and you're like, oh, man. And that's what he's like, look, I've known for years that Clark Kent's Superman and Batman's Bruce Wayne, but, you know, like, what's the point? You know, like, you, I wanted to beat you as your characters, not, yeah. So that was that was done really well. I really enjoyed that. But, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was good too. I mean, like the way he reacted to Rebirth Superman too when he came back. And like oh, I love that convergent. A lot of people didn't like the convergence story arc. Um, I liked it because really all it was was a vehicle to bring back Superman and Lois Lane, you know? Because I was one of these guys when when um when Flashpoint New 52 started, I'm like, hang on a minute. 
Lois was pregnant for God's sake. What you just killed the unborn child, and that because you don't want to have a real Superboy, you're happy with just the clone Connor Kent, you know? And I'm like, no, nah, that's not right. So it was sort of like a cheap way out of that storyline. So I like that we see it. Uh, well, well, yeah, they never really got rid of him, man. As far as the continuity goes, he's still pretty much rotting in the Oa science cells on Oa. So, um, yeah, I can see one day him getting out and causing all sorts of havoc. But um, they're more going with, with the new way that it's going. It looks like... Um, Oh yeah, um, yeah. He did have a, he did have a gauntlet with all the different types of uh, kryptonite on there. So you know, red, gold, green, um, and blue. You know, um, basically, so he could control like what sort of effects he could have on Kryptonians and stuff like that. Uh, he's actually going. They are ripping a bit off the Thanos and the Infinity Stone story arc at the moment with the, the Lex Luthor storyline, where he's actually found. Um, oh, it's hard to put it an artifact or something that can basically give him the power of all the evil in the universe. You know what I mean? So, and you're sort of like, oh, man, you know, a bit of weak writing here. But, yeah, and, and and yeah, Superman, that's the one that I was saying before, James Shea, that I actually did enjoy of the New 52, the Superman American Alien one. I thought that the, um, I thought that one was done really well. And particularly, you know, when he, when he was being hunted by the US government and stuff like that was was done really well. Oh, well, well, I'll have to check that one out, mate. I haven't seen um, on any of the videos of that yet. So, but yeah, like, um, I, I'm, I'm like classics, old school style. Like, you know, I grew up reading comics in the 80s and the 90s and stuff like that and still read today, you know. So, uh, to say some of the books have kept me sucked in, to, like, I, I haven't never stopped reading Superman, even through the New 52 saga. I was reading that religiously going, oh, I hope it gets better, I hope it gets better, I hope it gets better. Um, and in the end it did. You know, in the end it was starting to come good and then they killed him. So, um, but, you know, like there's certain things in, in comic book continuity I'm, I'm a stickler for, you know. Like I, I take things as, as grail, you know. Um, oh, geez. Red Hood, I really can't answer that because there's been a, a quite a lot. And, and, yes, I do read Bender Superman and I'm really enjoying it at the moment. Um, but yeah, there's been way too many good writers of Superman over the years, man, that I, I really just couldn't even give you my top three because there hasn't really been any writers that have really disliked their work on Superman. Um, if anything, the only Superman comic book title that I was never really a big fan of was that Man of Steel, um, when they were doing the four monthly, when, when Superman was weekly, you know, and they had, um, uh, the Adventures of Superman, Superman's Action Comics, and Superman the Man of Steel. I didn't like that Man of Steel comic because just the writing was fantastic, but the artwork in it was left a lot to be desired, you know, and it's sort of like detracted from the story. Um, and, you know, like we'll put it this way. If you ever read the graphic novel, if you didn't read the Superman titles back then, but you read the graphic novel of The Death of Superman, not the new one, the old one, um, when you get to them pages and you go, oh, shit, what's wrong with this? You know, where he's real big and looks all gangly and stuff like that. That was that one. And, um, but, yeah, with Bendis, man, like, you know, I was a bit, oh, okay, you know, not another Marvel writer skipping ship. And I wasn't really f too familiar with his work that he'd done at Marvel, you know, except asking Marvel fans and they're saying, yeah, man, he's a good writer. He, he's done some great stuff. You know, it was sad to see him go. I was like, oh, well, you know, let's see what he can do. And what he's doing at the moment with that, um, yeah, well, actually, I'll give you that, Baz. Kurt Swan. That, but that's the 80s, bro. You know, like that. he he was the perennial Superman artist of the 80s. And when you look at them, and that was when they first started to bring continuity in the comics too. So I think that's sort of like what really made him famous because them issues are still being held up today to show people to go, yeah, but this happened, you know, and, and it's canon, you know. And, yeah, and, and that's the thing. I mean, all-Star Superman, I think the best part of All-Star Superman was it really showed the humanity of the character, you know, for the first time that unless you were like a hardcore reader of Superman, then you wouldn't really appreciate it. You'd sort of like be, oh, well, you know, yeah, he's looking at him, he's just, just going to punch him hard and the fight's going to be over. There's no one that can beat him and stuff like that. Uh, and I think that's why, you know, characters like Brainiac and magic-based characters as well, like um, I'm thinking like uh, Banshee and... Um, the demon and stuff like that, you know, like from DC that you've seen him go up against and, yeah, like, you know, it doesn't go well for him. 
Um, in fact, Banshee's pretty much one of my favourites just because of that one scene where... Oh, no, no, not Frank Miller, man. Don't tell me that, Red Hood, because Frank Miller hates Superman. I mean, Romita Jr. does great art, but Frank Miller absolutely hates Superman. You can see that from the way that he talks, the way he's done it in his Batman books. And sorry, I've just got my big dogs have just decided to walk in to keep me company. Um, and, yeah, when Lex Luthor gets Superman's powers was pretty good too. Yeah, I like that. When he's when he's spinning out at the, everything on a microscopic level and this is how you see the world. Uh, oh, the dogs, yeah. So one is a bull Arab cross Great Dane. Um, the other one is an American Staffy cross Great Dane. And the one that just sits there and licks herself all day is, is a Labrador. <laughs> No, no, you're not playing in here. Hey, 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 no, hey, no. Sorry about that. <laughs> but this is why I've got everything in perspex behind me, guys, because they like to come in here and, and chill out so I make sure, damn sure I don't get um fur or anything on my statues. Buckley, stop biting up. Hey, no biting. <coughs> yeah. So yeah, you'll see this one here. This is the oh well, this is this is the uh this is the uh bull Arab Great Dane. The big girl. She weighs almost as much as me. And the one that's barking now is a little Labrador because she loves to bark unless she's getting attention. So noisy little girl that she is. And yeah, the other one's the boy. So <laughs> and now the Labrador is just laying, lounging on my feet. So that's what she's going to – she's not going to move for the rest of the day. Uh, yeah, but, oh, God, Red Hood, that that, that doesn't – um. oh, well, actually, wow, the way that I keep my, my statues clear of dust, man, is basically I keep them all behind Perspex. Um, and the ones that are up here, basically, like, once a week, I just use um, – just grab the brush. It's got a little makeup brush that I use. So, yeah, just steal that from your missus's makeup drawer and <laughs> make sure she hasn't used it. And that's fantastic to keep the dust off your statues. Never use compressed air. That's a uh, main tip that I've got you because if you've got any um, paint defects or anything like that on the statue, it'll cause the paint to lift and fly away. And then you're left with a big chunk missing on your statue. And, um, yeah, basically the other way is to, um, like, I basically keep my windows usually closed and stuff like that, and there's usually only me and the dogs in here. So, um, yeah, there's usually not too much dust or anything like that and vacuum once a week just to make sure that everything's clean. I've removed the lounge out of here, and that's all I've got more room for the reviews and stuff like that. So that, that's good because I usually just sit on my computer chair anyway. <laughs> oh, Red Hood, I've actually got a... Um, real affinity for Power Girl, not for the reasons that you're thinking, uh, just because of the history of the character. Like I, I was reading in the early 80s and that, so I, I read a lot of them um, Earth 2 storylines and that where she was Supergirl growing up and stuff like that. So I'm really a big fan of that that part and I like the fact that when they've done uh, New 52 and Rebirth and stuff like that, they've brought her into the mainstream. You know, like um, they've made out that her and Huntress – both escaped from Earth 2 when um, uh, when Darkseid came. Well, actually, they didn't escape. They got sucked into a portal and then got punted here. And But, yeah, like that that was what really appeals to me about the character. And, and that's, that's the thing. Most people don't realise that Power Girl isn't a, a different Kryptonian, that she's actually Supergirl growing up. Supergirl's like 16, 17, 18, and Power Girl's like in her mid-30s. Ah, oh, Robert uh, Hendricks, you're talking about uh, Tam Marino. Um, yeah, there was some issues that went on there. Um, I don't really want to go into that. But, yeah, basically, look, we ended up having to call it quits, bro. Um, just there was a lot of a lot of arguing and stuff like that. And um, so, yeah, then my son and I started doing it together and we've been having a great time doing it so, so far. So, And, um, yeah, I, I really don't even know what's happened to Tan at all. You know, um, he sort of like dropped off the face of the planet. Last I heard that he sold someone a pumpkin head and they didn't get it. You know, they paid for it and they haven't got it. That, that's all I've heard. 
like because they messaged me asking if I was still in contact with him and stuff like that. And I was like, I still talk to him occasionally, but um, when I messaged him about it, I never heard a reply. So, yeah. And, and a lot of people were warning me, like there was stuff going on behind the scenes where he was in arguments with people and stuff like that. And they said, dude, you know, are you, are you like him? And I'm like, well, I, I don't know anything about this argument or I'm not involved in it. You know, me, I'm, man, I'm Mr. Nice Guy. I'm the guy who gets his shirt off on, on YouTube. <laughs> Um, the electrical air blast, yeah, yeah, you can use it. Like if you've got, um, yeah, just not the compressed air because, you know, you, um, you get the liquid in, that, in it and that sometimes squirts out and stuff. So if you've got like a air pump or something for like, you know, you, you blow up bed or an air mattress or something like that, yeah, you can use that sort of stuff, no worries, because it's, it's not high pressure. You know, it's just enough to blow the crap away, you know. But even in saying that, when you do that, you're still going to need to use like a makeup brush to – to get the fine particles and that off, because otherwise I'll just still sit there. Well, guys, we've been going for an hour and a half. I think we're going to wrap it up tonight. Is there any final questions before we call it and let you all go to sleep? We'll give it a couple of minutes for the, la the final questions to roll in. <laughs> Thanks, Sly. We will. And, oh, look, here comes the other half of the um, Odd Couple Statue Reviews, Slave Boy. And look what he does to me. He brings me a coffee in a Batman mug, you son of a bitch. <laughs> um, oh, what I did for work, I'm actually a work health and safety officer. Um, so basically I'm the guy at where you work that, you know, people don't like because I'm always telling you what to do to do it safely and making sure that you... um basically have the right PPE on and you're not falling in the holes or smacking people with bricks and stuff. Um, I do have a Superman mug slide. That's what I'm saying. He brought me the Batman one on purpose. <laughs> That's his mug. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically I'm, I'm a work health safety officer, uh, predominantly in construction and stuff like that. So that's why you know, I get a lot of free time because when there's lots of rain and stuff like that, the work sites are shut down, so I'm not needed there. Um, but I'm actually starting up a new role where I'm actually going to be working at a cemetery as a work health and safety officer. So this is going to be a new experience for me and um, there's a lot of work for there for me to do apparently. So it looks like I might be there for a, a while and it's on the other side of the city. So joy, joy, I've got to drive through the city every day because um, I live a good 35 kilometres on the other side of the city. So um, in suburbia. So you can see the city from here, but <laughs> I don't actually live in the city. <laughs> But listen, guys, thank you very much for everyone that's viewed and thank you very much for all the thumbs up. 15 view, fifteen people watching and 13 thumbs up. That's that's amazing. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, I might start this up a bit more often too, So, but I'll be sure to put up more warning in that on Facebook and stuff like that before I do. I was actually trying to set up a, a – for it to stream half an hour from when I was going to start and it just started on me and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, here I am live. <laughs> all right, guys. So you guys look after yourself. I actually, what I might do is I actually might do because it's um, it, it'll be only a, a quick one sort of thing. I might actually, when I get the replacement Wonder Woman gal, go to head, just go live and show it on here, um, just so people can get a better right, a, a quick view before I do an actual full on review because that takes a couple of hours to edit and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, guys, take care. Love you all and happy trails. <laughs>